Deputy, Deputy Councillor Connolly. <coughs> Minister, I think the best way we can show our, our respect and our gratitude to the whistleblower Shane Carr is to stand with him and to ensure that he doesn't suffer ever a hain. I was ever though that we changed the procedures after we learned, after we find out what he actually did. And I think the, what you're praising a, a review, I don't accept it. I don't accept that whatsoever. It's not independent. Now, bear in mind that the latest revelation this morning was a memo praising someone that followed up hunted down, chased up and followed up again information that was going to be used to do down the family. Followed up, hunted down, chased up and followed up again. And you've given a speech here today and you know I have the greatest of respect for you, but it's not about you or me here today. And you talk about your alarm and your outrage and you go on to praise the whistleblower, but then you go on to tell us there was no malice intended. You couldn't possibly tell us, you know that. And you tell us that it may have been lawful and there's a narrative that it was probably lawful from a lot of the speakers. In my e experience, limited as it is, as a psychologist and a barrister, I don't think there's any legal basis for the manner in which the department has acted like a private investigator. Even with private investigators, there are rules and regulations. And the exchange of medical reports and information in any law case is determined by rules which are open and transparent. So none of this makes sense to me. And to say it may be legal is unnecessary at this point. What I would have liked to have today was senior cabinet ministers in here, the absence, and again, you've been left in the lurch, absolutely in the lurch. And it becomes about you or me, which is absolutely absurd, because it's about a very serious story where information has been gathered uh, surreptitiously in a clandestine manner to be used to do down people and families with autism and special needs in a, under the guise of saving the state money. Now, I want to ask, where is the report, the senior counsel's report? Will it be published? Did the department go to RTE or somebody on behalf of the department and say, don't threaten them with this, the Official Secrets Act? Did that happen? How many files are we talking about? What explorations has your department done to find out this? What, how many other areas does it affect? For example, the, the women who came forward and took cases with cervical cancer. I just mentioned them. How many other sections has it affected? And at the very least, let's have a full and frank discussion in this doll with senior cabinet ministers being held to account in relation to a department that's clearly out of control. And I say that reluctantly <coughs> because they've come forward and said, we've done nothing wrong. And now they're going to investigate that they've done nothing wrong and come forward and confirm they've done nothing wrong. And you're asking us in this lovely establishment to think that's not nonsense. Thank you, Deputy. Well, I, thank you. I comply with the rules. Thank you, Chairperson. Thank you, Deputy. Uh, now, Colin, uh, Mr. Anne Rabbit, uh, to conclude, she has 10 minutes. Um, thank you, Chair. And as I said at the, at the, uh, to one of the deputies there earlier on, I want to apologise to the families who watched the RT Primetime Investigates programme last week and for any upset that was caused and for any of the questions I couldn't answer here today um, it is my ambition to get those answers and to put them into the public domain because I believe that's how we would build trust and ensure that there's transparency there chair and um, so I will start there um, and I wish to thank the deputies who made contributions today and I agree that upholding the rights of the most vulnerable members of society is of the utmost importance and I'm very conscious of the utmost and the recent allegations have caused to the parents and the families and I firmly believe that the whistleblower has an important role in raising matters of public concern. And I acknowledge the actions and the many brave people in coming forward to raise their concerns. And I will end by stressing that very serious allegations have been made, have been made, made against the department and the review is underway. And as we say, directed by the Secretary General, which will provide factual detail related matters to these matters. And it's important, however, to emphasise these allegations of a similar nature have already been examined by the Senior Independent Council, which I am looking for it to be published and made available to all. Um, but saying that, that was before the revelations that came on RTE radio this morning. And future, in future consideration, we will need to be given across all parties on how transparency and whole of litigation process can be improved. And I do want to read into the record the questions that I asked myself of my department um, last um, Thursday evening before I actually watched the show. 
Uh, so it's important to put this in context and just to share with the members here. So how many open cases are there and families impacted and what, and what will need to be contacted? So the answer I have to that, open cases, I've said four dozen open cases, and that is very, to differentiate between dormant cases. And I am being told that a liaison person is going to be put in, in contact with those families, um, a support liaison, um, to, 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 to let them be aware that they have been impacted. How many closed cases are there and are um, families impacted? and the need for them to be contacted. So I'm told in total there is approximately 270 cases in its entirety. Um, I don't know how far back it goes. Um, was consent from all families not sought? Why was consent from all families not sought? And perhaps that's what the review will show. Why did this particular practice of case tracking file management start? When did it start? Can the minister be provided with a copy of the initial legal advice showing this acceptable management of litigation? Um, when I put this report, when I asked these questions, I did not have a sighting of the senior counsel report that was published last November. Was other legal advice about this practice sought from other senior counsel, data protection specialists or the AG office over the years? And if so, what was the content of this advice? I think that's important to be known. How regularly did the department seek updates on these cases from the local HSE, CHOs, and who sanctioned on each occasion? How much of the material received from the litigants was from the child and family? That's important as to who presented it. Was the material assessed by anyone in particular once it was received in the department? Why was the minister, and when I talk about the minister, I refer to myself, why was the minister not told last year that there was an issue and that was being investigated by a senior counsel? When was the senior counsel hired? We all know it was this time last year. Well, we know now. Um, when was the senior counsel report received by the department? I We now know it was received in November 2019. Why was the minister not informed that the report had been received or the findings in it? As I say, when I asked that question, I still didn't have it. I did not receive it till Saturday. Who approved the terms of reference for the senior counsel? Who approved the funding for the work and how much did it cost? It cost 10,000 euros. Can you provide a copy of the senior counsel? I'm now in receipt of it. How many people had access to the information over to the years? That is what is being sought as we speak. How many people and who currently have access to the spreadsheets? My understanding, and I think it's important for you all to know as well, this was not held within the Department of Disabilities. This was held within the Department of Social Care. And the social care would also include mental health and, and older persons. So that's where the file was held. Um, what is the plan for the spreadsheets reference going forward? Is it still being used? Yes, is the answer, still being used. Has other concerns about this file management been raised over the years? I'm awaiting a response to that. And are there other similar file case management protocols in place elsewhere in the department? That was my last question up to before meeting with the Secretary General um, last Friday. Um, I was, as I say before I came in here today, I was expecting a briefing. Proceedings ran ahead. So the script that I read out, while some, is, some from the department, a lot of the script that I presented here this afternoon is from myself. Um, I hope that, and I think that will tackle some of the issues. This is a test for us, I think. Um, I think it was Deputy, you know who I'm, I'm speaking to you, yes. Um, this is going to be a test for us because there is a test of ethical, cultural change, shift, mindset, um, transparency, trust and engagement. And that's where we need to get to. Um, and it should be a rights-based approach. Um, yes, we understand about legal cases and it's unfortunate that they end up happening, but we know to, need to know the process, but it's the trust and the transparency and the person at the centre. And I think if we manage, or if I manage along with my team to get to that space, of understanding, of sharing of that information uh, and a rights-based approach, I think I will be working in a very good, solid ground going forward. But I need to sort out currently what is the practice and share with you in an open, transparent, to build the trust of the parents, because at the parents and the children have to be the centre of the conversation that happened here this evening. So again, I would say for anybody watching um, the, the, the programme last week, um, we as a government um, believe very, very supportive 
of young people and their rights and their rights to education and their rights to their health and ensuring that we put you first, front and centre and we do care. Absolutely, we care 150% about you. But at this moment in time, there is questions, there's doubts, there's a shadow, but we are going to clear that. And when we clear that and can emphatically stand here and tell you the process that happened, we then want you to continue to trust and believe in us, believe in your physicians, believe in the process, because it's there to protect. And that is what it was always about. So when the Taoiseach stood here yesterday on the floor of the door, and he wholeheartedly said that when he put in special needs education, it hadn't been here in the past, it just shows you the little base we have come from. Now, you have to wonder how high within the departments we have risen, but we will question it, I will challenge it, I will push it, but I will get the answers to ensure that trust, transparency, is returned, returned to the people who need it most, the most vulnerable in our society. Garamila Mahagav.